flight recorder we took away last night and we had an initial readout of it which rather suggests that um, something went wrong you know, with the leading edge droop around about 1800 feet a couple of minutes after takeoff. Up to that point the flight seems to have progressed normally with all the flaps coming in in a proper way but the leading edge droop came in at too low an airspeed. What speed did it come in at? It came in at somewhere about 170 to 180 knots, whereas that normally the pilot would bring it in at 225 to 250. And uh, with too low an airspeed, it means there are going to be certain problems that the pilot will have to deal with. And the behavior of the aircraft after that fits in very well with the pattern we've discovered on the ground here. How long would it have been between the moment when the flaps came in and the crashing of the plane on the ground? Oh, half a minute, perhaps a little more. Why do you think these flaps came in early? Well, this we don't know. This is one of the things we'll have to find out. And our investigation will be aimed at doing just that. It could have been instrument error, it could be near anything. It could be a number of things, just from a simple mistake to, to a complicated piece of machinery going wrong. We can't do this until we've taken all these things apart and had a look at them. Is there any evidence from the flight recorder that there was any major loss of engine power or anything like that? No, the flight recorder wouldn't tell us that directly. But what we can tell on the site here is that the engines were certainly going when they hit the ground. But once a pilot has problems, it's difficult to say what he's going to do with his engines. How controllable do you think the aircraft would have been? In other words, would the pilot have been able to avoid these power cables, or was that good luck? Um, I don't think so. I think that by the time the pilot had come out of the bottom of the clouds, there was not very much he could do. This was the tenth day of the inquiry, the day Mr Justice Geoffrey Lane, with his technical advisers, decided to look at what they've already been talking about for 45 hours. It took four government accident inspectors nearly five months to reconstruct Trident Papa India and the Great Hangar at Farnborough. 
because of the circumstances of the crash in the soft earth of a field at Staines, it's been possible to find virtually every nut, bolt and piece of wire that made up the plane, which flew for just 150 seconds from London's Heathrow Airport to its death. The painstaking work of assembly and detection depended on the flight record of the black box, as it so often does. The box was unharmed and gave a perfect reading. So the inspectors were able first to rule out any engine failure. All three engines were functioning properly, though the thrust was not quite as strong as it should have been. They looked next to the tailplane, but that was all right too. In fact, the stabilizers are still in working order. Then they found that the droop leader on the left here was put into the up position, though Papa India wasn't at the required height or speed. The droops themselves on the front edge of the wing appear to have been fully retracted, which shows that the error of pulling the lever had had its effect. The effect was to put Papa India into a stall. Just 36 seconds later, it hit the ground. Yet even in that short time, recovery was still possible. The stall warning and recovery system began to operate. The warning lights, amber and red for caution and alert, flashed on. The system worked correctly as far as we know. Indeed, it worked three times. But someone on the flight deck pulled this lever which overrides the stall recovery. No one knows why and probably never will. From that moment, it was all up with Papa India. The passengers and crew stood no chance to survive the impact. But there's no way of this inquiry discovering exactly what happened to aircraft registration GARPI Papa India. Anthony Carthew, News at 10, Farnborough. The official record shows that the last flight of Trident Papa India had a kind of doom about it even before it got off the ground. There was a row in the crew room less than half an hour before takeoff, during which Captain Key lost his temper in an argument about pilots' pay. This may well have been when his heart attack began. The medical evidence suggested that he had a serious but undetected heart condition. The argument probably provoked the final stroke. The damp Sunday evening went Papa India, 118 people on board, settling for the short flight to Brussels. The aircraft moved out towards its appointed runway for takeoff. The runway, 28 right. The time was eight minutes past five. 30 seconds later, clearance for takeoff came from the control tower and the brakes were released. Papa in the waters of Staines Reservoir began to appear as the turn was completed. Captain Key reported that he was climbing as cleared and signed off correctly with his flight number B-Line 548. Now came the time to comply with noise abatement procedures. On this particular flight, the flaps on the wings had to be brought back from an angle of 20 degrees and the engines throttled back to 71% of full power. The instructions appear to have been followed completely. The autopilot was engaged. But at this stage, the first odd factor occurred. At the then height of 350 feet, the correct speed to engage autopilot should have been 177 knots. In fact, the speed was only 170 knots, the first sign of a speed loss which was to increase disastrously as the flight went on. It's into its journey, and all still seemed normal to the crew. Air traffic control ordered Captain Key to climb to 6,000 feet. Key replied very tersely, up to 6-0. He didn't complete the message, and this was his last message, and he didn't give the usual sign-off. His friends who've heard the tape say his voice was quite abnormal. It's thought that this was the moment the final heart attack began. At this stage, the altitude was 1,700 feet and the airspeed 157 knots. But the airspeed should have been 177 knots. In other words, Papa India was 20 knots below its proper speed. And then, quite unpredictably, and for no possible flying reason that anyone could discover in nine weeks of inquiry, one of the flight crew pulled the lever which retracted the droops, the movable flaps on the front of the wings. The lever was in the bottom center of your picture. It was moved. From that moment, Papa India was in serious trouble, though disaster could still have been avoided. The nature of the trouble was, first of all, that the speed of the aircraft was only 162 knots. It should have been at least 225 knots. On BEA Tridents, there's a regulation which says that droops must not be retracted below a speed of 225 knots. But that's not all. 
The height was now only around 1,770 feet. It should have been at least 3,000 feet according to the flight manual. The result of this inexplicable is its ability to fly, and the mechanical stall warnings gave this news to the crew. The stall warning system produces flashing lights and a noise over the pilot's headphones. It disengages the autopilot and creates an automatic movement in the pilot's control column called a stick shake. This is followed by a stick push designed to push down the nose of the aircraft and increase speed. On Papa India, there were three stick shakes and then three stick pushes. The aircraft was losing height from the stall and fly the Trident out of trouble. But after the third stick push, someone on the flight deck decided to cancel the stall recovery process, the one thing that would have saved Papa India, by pulling an override lever. The lever was pulled, and that dumped the entire automatic system. The Attorney General, Sir Peter Rawlinson, told the inquiry, the lifting of that lever sealed the fate of the aircraft and all those on board. The lever was lifted when Papa India was 128 seconds into its flight. From then on, it fell like a stone. 22 There were no survivors. Yes, <clears throat> BEA has been into this report with great care. And I can say on behalf of BEA that it certainly does ac accept the recommendations and the observations. And if I may, uh, before we go on with it, I'd just like to say two things. The first is that on behalf of BEA and everybody who is in BEA, uh, I would like to express our great sympathy with everybody who has suffered as a result of this very, very tragic accident. And the other thing is that I would like to say thank you on behalf of BEA uh, to the Commissioner, Mr. Justice Lane, and his assessors, and all who help, because the uh, report is painstaking, comprehensive, and detailed, and we're very grateful to them. Do you therefore accept all the recommendations without reservation? We accept all the recommendations, and we shall attempt, insofar as it is humanly possible, to put them all into operation. Do you think Papa India could ever happen again? I would, I would rate the chances of millions and millions to one against, if you mean uh, an accident having the same characteristics, where the um, uh, captain of the aircraft uh, had a heart condition similar to Keyes. I, uh, and uh, as, the, as you know, I'm sure from the report, uh, we are fitting a, an airspeed balk um, to the droop. I cannot see that this accident could ever be repeated.